So, I got ready to start filming this video and somebody steals my chair. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter blog. Today I'm going to show you how I make a simple little pen pal wallet card. <laughs> So yeah, I clearly don't know what I want to call this, but I think I'm going to call it a pen pal wallet because it's not necessarily a flip book which has multiple pages, it's probably more a wallet, I don't know. Um, but yes, before I start I'm going to chat because this video will once again be a voiceover because wow, that is just so much easier to edit and so much more fun as well, um, but just a little bit of chit chat first, let me pick a tea that I want to try. I think I'm going to try this one, which I got from Rosita a little while ago. Of trying new teas that end up surprising me. So, gonna make myself some tea. Thank you, Rosita, for sending me this. I will give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, or I don't know, <laughs> probably later on in this video. Um, but yeah, okay. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a, a little pen pal journal, which will be or a pen pal wallet, I don't know. Which will be a very fun way to send your letter in a much more special way than just sending the letter. Uh, it will give you ideas for how you can combine a letter with some goodies and make it look really cute and still flat so that you can still mail it kind of cheap, I guess. I just realized I think I'm in the shot actually. Hello, <laughs> I keep talking to like no one in particular, but um, sometimes I get comments from people who love my ideas but who do not have the supplies you need. I get that that sucks, but don't let that stop you because I right now I have all of these supplies. I mean, I have my own craft room for Christ's sake. Like I have this tool, but before I had this, um, this is my uh, scoring trim. Scoring trim, I think trim and scoreboard. Before I had this I just used scissors so please don't see this and be intimidated just use what you have and get creative get like have fun with it. Um, on that note I will link everything that I use in the description box down below just in case you would want to invest in something I sure uh, I will always try to link it the only thing is this paper block I cannot link it because it's from Action and they do not do not sell it on the website. They don't have like a website where they show this kind of stuff. But yeah, I will always try to link everything down below. I usually use Craft Stash because I have an affiliation program with them, but I also try linking Amazon nowadays. I'm now going to shut up and um, we will do a voiceover. <laughs> So, it's time for the voiceover. Um, one other thing that I said in this video that I cut out now is that when I was making this, I did not yet know who it was going to. Um, in Friday's video, you saw me pick a recipient. In Friday's video, I did the envelope decorating for this particular mail. And on Friday, I picked the recipient, or in Friday's video, I picked the recipient um, because when I was creating this flip book, I didn't want to focus too much on who it was going to. That may sound a little bit weird, but uh, at times I can get so worried or worked up or stuck on the recipient instead of focusing on crafting. For example, if I want to reply to someone who has made something that's really, really cool, all I can think about is that I have to make something that's also really cool or that, you know, is equally as good and then I'm not really having fun anymore. I'm just focusing on quality, which is stupid. And that's why I decided for this mail I was going to pick the recipient afterwards. And that's also because sometimes I receive very large envelopes, very large happy mails, and then like a part of my brain is saying that I have to make it very large as well. And I just wanted to focus on the process and having fun and not too much on the outcome, if that makes sense. But as you could see in Friday's video, uh, this ended up going to Caitlin. And what I've been doing in the background is I've picked, I have a luxury paper block. I will tell you more about that in a second. And I picked the different papers for my pen pal wallet. So the outside and then the ones I wanted to use as pockets. And as you could see, I had literally no idea what I was going to do. I just 
I'm now die cutting different borders into the pockets just to see what I would like. I keep changing it, but that is how I usually like crafting. Just go at it and see what comes from it and see if you like something, you can leave it. And if you don't like it, you can change it again. So on the right, I'm doing one large pocket and then on the left, I'm layering two pockets on top of each other. And I'm now going to die cut some shapes, I think flowers, from the left pocket, just so you can see a little peek of what's inside. Okay, and like I said, the main thing I'm using is that luxury paper block. And it has paper, it has the vellum quotes, it has die cuts, it has stickers. And I also said this in the previous video and I tried to tell you in every video where I use these blocks, but it's from a brand called Deco Jam Crafts and you can only buy them at action stores, as far as I'm aware. And that's a little bit difficult because a lot of people are interested in buying these books and I get it because they look really cool. And then I get messages and comments and people saying, Vivian, what is it called? Where do I buy it? Why can I not find it online? And uh, as I said, it's as far as I know, it's only available at action stores, which is a store in Europe. And I'm really sorry if you cannot find it online, but that's probably because they do not sell it online. So I'm sorry I cannot help you with this. Maybe in the future they will se uh, sell it in other stores as well. But for now, as far as I know, it's only available in Europe. And yeah, but that's sometimes for me as well. You know, sometimes you guys in America and Canada and stuff have all of those my cool stores and Tuesday morning and I'm also jealous sometimes. So maybe, yeah, maybe now you know how I feel. But I, yeah, like I said, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I feel like, I think someone bought it online once, but I also cannot find that post anymore and I might be mistaken. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, like the official company doesn't sell this book online. Sometimes you have resellers, but they ask way too much. So I wouldn't recommend, but okay. On back to this project, what I did is I have that tracing paper, which is like a milky white paper and I put that behind that little frame die cut just so that it stands out from the project a little bit more and then I die cut the word hello from one of those papers I actually used the scrap that was left from that paper after I die cut that on the envelope so you have the little hello and then I used that Ooh, I forgot what it's called again. Like a, I have like a glitter pen, a sparkle pen, I think it's called. I will link everything down below. I use that to put a little bit of shimmer on the hello, which looks actually really, really cool in real life. But of course, it's barely see, like barely noticeable in the video. But what I was saying at the beginning of this video is actually still very very relevant you know how I said that sometimes I just want to focus on crafting and not worry too much about the outcome because contrary to what some people may think I actually worry quite a lot and I know that some people are intimidated to send me something but <laughs> um, I hope you guys know that it can also be sometimes intimidating for me to send something back just as much as it may be intimidating for you to send something to me and I'm not saying that you guys intimidate me, it's just sometimes, like, I don't know, I feel like there are certain expectations, especially since I have a YouTube channel and I can make stuff seem so so simple and you just saw me tapping my fingers, which is actually my thinking movement, like, okay, what am I gonna do next? But because this video is speeded up so much, um, <clears throat> the actual footage for this video was actually over two hours so do realize that like this video is like 20 minutes long but the actual process was well over two hours but i know that it can be misleading almost because it it looks like i'm like i'm just doing this while in real life i'm just i'm moving stuff around a ton of times i speed this process up like eight times so <laughs> yeah this story isn't coming out <laughs> very fluently, but basically what I'm trying to say is that I think part of the creative process is maybe being insecure. And I also want you guys to know that even me, like I have a YouTube channel that is completely focused on showing my crafting. 
and even I still worry at times like Psh, I'm not confident <laughs> and I think that's also okay but I think it's important to know because I know that a lot of people can be intimidated by sending me mail because I don't know maybe it looks like I find this easy but I think it's just as much a process for me as it is for you I think that's good to realize as well like I'm no different in terms of worrying but probably there's also a lot of people who do not worry <laughs> i guess that must be nice that has to be nice if you're a person who doesn't worry tell me what are your tips how do you do it how do you not worry i think we can all learn from that because as far as i know if i talk to my pen pals and stuff we all worry or we are all insecure what I was doing in the background before I forget to focus on the actual video is um, distress oxides. I also did that on the envelope to make it like a little bit coherent. I used two different colors. I will link them down below. I think the purple one is Victorian velvet and the other one is dried marigold. They always have these really classy names. But I used two different colors and then kind of blended that on the page. But it's like not actual mixed media paper, so it's a little bit hard. But in the end, it looks kind of cool. And then I spritz that with some water because distress oxides and water gives like this really cool effect. And then I lifted some of the colors up again. And then I put the pocket down on top. And that all sounds very intimidating. And trust me, when I started with distress oxides, I was so intimidated. But if you want to have some really great tips, I suggest watching uh, Simply Creative Kira or Kira Pace because she actually does a lot of mixed media and a lot of distress oxide and that definitely helped me in knowing kind of how to start and where to start but the good thing about distress oxide is that it's kind of forgiving like you saw me blend those colors and at first i had two really different like stripes almost the orange and the purple but then in the end i didn't like that so i went over it again and i kind of blended everything together a little bit more and that is perfectly doable with mixed media with distress oxide. So if you want to get into like a, a, a beginner friendly medium, I do actually recommend distress oxides because you can just layer the colors as often as you like. I don't know about distress inks. I know there's a difference between inks and oxides, but the oxides you can actually like layer as often as you like. So you can just keep going <laughs> until you're satisfied. So for me, that actually helps just the idea of the colors not being too permanent, if that makes sense. And if I may say so, I actually think that right page looks really, really cool with the different colors. The only problem is because I used water, the paper warped a little bit, but I'm fairly confident that that was flattened again in mail. If you hear any weird sounds um, or running, we are currently having our little... Yeah, I just stirred my tea with my scissors again. That's becoming a theme. Um, but we are currently having time where our cat Noose is meeting our little kitten, who is currently <laughs> on her back looking like a little worm. Basically, Noose is angry. I'm going to describe this scene here. Noose is angry and grumpy she's basically a grandma a three-year-old grandma and then we have the little one who's very curious and who wants to run towards noose kind of like a hello i want to be friends so she will run at noose noose will growl and sometimes do like fake hitting i don't think she actually hits the kitten she just does that like acting hitting or something i don't know and then the little one will flip on her back Flatten her ears, which looks ridiculous. She looks like a fat, hairy worm. <laughs> Lay on her back, flatten her ears, and basically surrender. I I have a picture. I can put that in the video at the end of the video. So if you want to see what it looks like when Sage looks like a little fat worm surrendering to a grandma, grumpy grandma cat, stay until the end of this video, okay? <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, okay, I'm completely... Yeah, that's again, did you see the the tapping of my fingers? That's my thinking. So it's not like I'm just going and going and keep going. It's I think in between and I move stuff around and that is part of the fun of crafting. 
but in the end I have to admit I made this back in May which is why I was wearing long sleeve shirts but in the end I have to admit that this was one of my favorite projects in 2019 so far but also um, in terms of shipping like how much it weighed one of the most simple ones because it's not a flip book it's basically just a loaded card with pockets so actually like the basis of it is really really simple and still it's one of my favorites so i guess what i'm trying to say is simple can be good <laughs> what am i doing i don't know in the background i do know what i'm doing in the background and that is i'm making like a little um paper clip flag paperclip banner like a little yeah you will see what I mean I'm like decorating a little flag on a paperclip <laughs> I don't know what to call that with some of the paper scraps that I had left I think making those little banner paperclips is a great way to use up some scraps you have left from crafting and it's also kind of fun because you can use the same papers that you've used in your project again to make a little gift Oh, before I forget, if you're in on Instagram and you have made something inspired by this video or another video I have done, don't forget to use the hashtag the paper letter blog if you end up sharing it because that hashtag is filled with little crafts inspired by my videos, <laughs> which is really, really cool. Um, I have to say the main part of the photos are accordion folders which is so fun one of my favorite videos ever accordion folders so a lot of you have been recreating those but there are different things and it's really really fun to scroll through <laughs> and i feel kind of honored that i don't know i gave you some creative ideas in a way um those are mason jar tags really cute i'm just making some little washi tape samples to add as a gift tying them together with some purple twine and those are just papers from the paper gang one of the paper gang boxes I have to admit in these videos I always show all of the goodies I include such as that paper gang paper but I don't actually remember if I managed to include that <laughs> in the envelope Caitlin will have to tell us because like I'm including all of the goodies now and then I'm going to write the letter I already put the letter paper in here just so you can see what it looks like but I still have to write the letter at that point and then I take all of the goodies out because I'm writing the letter and then sometimes I, I'm pretty sure I forget to put everything back in <laughs> so nowhere near perfect but yeah um, those are all of the die cuts I made with my die cutting machine and I'm just sharing some with her on the right we have simple paper pattern paper die cuts on the left we have paper I have done mixed media on so that's like different distress oxides or sprays and then I die cut them to make flowers so they're basically like handmade hand decorated hand painted papers I don't know <sighs> okay I'm almost done with this that's my little banner paper clip almost done with this tutorial I really hope this gave you some ideas for your own mail um, I really hope you were inspired to make a pen pal wallet of your own or you know anything else and yeah there we have another close up and um, I don't I, I am not fluent today <laughs> but if you want to see the envelope that this was sent in I will link that video down below as well don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more either incoming or outgoing mail I upload new videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes in between and thank you so much for watching. Okay, bye-bye.